All right, Brakatai Hawa, Brakatai Hawa Shai, Brakatai Hawa, Brakatai Hawa Shai, Brakatai Hawa, Brakatai Hawa Shai, Kohala La, Yahweh Bashim Hawa Shai. That's Hebrew interpret, bless Yahweh, bless Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Father Yahweh in the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taz Award from the GMS New Jersey camp. And uh, Salaki, I'm a little hype because, you know, I just did a video about 40 minutes long and, you know, it, uh, you know, it got messed up or whatever. So I'm here to do it again. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it brief and short to the point. Um, but I knew there was a lot of edification and a lot of things that were said in that last video that um, I'm probably not going to be able to repeat, you know, because, it's you know, when we teach, man, it's all through the spirit, man. And uh, certain things that we may say and how you say it. And how it come off is through the spirit of the Lord, you know, to edify. You know, edify means to build, so that it build upon your faith toward Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and his truth. You know, the scriptures say the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. You know, so it's all about, you know, being saved. It's all about salvation at the end of the day. Now, uh, this topic is uh, based on the meaning of the word world. All right. Now, Jake, Jake, Jake is simple as hell and you um you know this is this is a video for you church going grape juice drinking uh christianity and baptist uh uh knuckleheads man you know you guys uh try to stand on um this uh word world in john 316 when john 316 is so uh easy to understand um when you been taught to actually go into the meaning of words you know our apostles and elders here at great millstone you know are great teachers they're great historians they're great prophets you know you name it you know they they have it all through the spirit and power of yahweh bashim yahweh shai and they're great teachers you know and when you even taught you know when you're taught in school you know i can't say now but i know when i was growing up you know there was certain uh, teachers that stood out that you favored who you liked, you know, where you actually learn something from, you know Because they taught you in a way that you didn't know they taught you how to learn, you know They taught you how to research and and that's the way uh, The Lord put the Holy Spirit the Rakakwadash upon the men who are set up to give you this truth And I'm gonna say it's the Apostles and elders of Great Millstone man all right because we here at Great Millstone, and I'm not just saying because I'm a part of Great Millstone, but, you know, I'm saying it's because it's factual. We have 100% truth, all right? If it's something you don't know, you can, you know, find out. You know, the mysteries are really not a mystery anymore. The Lord revealed the mysteries unto his prophets. The scriptures say the prophets are subject to the prophets, all right? He said, before things spring up, I tell you of them. So before the Lord actually returned and cracked those clouds, he told his men, he told his men to go out there and warn, condemn, reprove, rebuke, all right, and exhort his name, because it's all about the glory to Yahweh Bashim Shai, not us, not man, all right. So the meaning of the word world and John three sixteen, all right, you got four different scriptures I'm gonna go into that has the word world, and it's a and in, and in its context and how it's being uh, written for you to receive, it is a different meaning. Because when you understand certain words that, are, that we use today, certain words are used. Certain words are used in a context for its meaning. All right. That's how you understand. That's how you interpret something. You know, well, you you understand something when you read it, you know, and words can have different meanings. One word can have different meanings. And this word world have different meanings. And in order for you to understand the scriptures, you got to get into the Greek. All right. You got to go and understand a little bit of the Hebrew. All right. You got to know a little bit of Latin, you know, got to be able to read and to tap into these things, these tools in order to understand the, the scriptures the right way. All right. To get the proper right understanding of what the, the Lord is actually talking about. OK, so anyway, let's read John 3.16. Right. This is John 316. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
So now it says, for God. Now, what is God? That God is Yahweh, okay, who the world ignorantly just calls God. God is a title. It says, for God so loved the world. Now, when you go into this word world here, and you should be going into the strong coordinates of this word world written in John 3, 16, okay? And I say the best version of the Bible to use is the uh, King James Version, all right? Because a lot of people be looking for a way out. You know, you read it, you understand it, but then you got pride and you want the Bible, you want the Lord to say something else, you know? But that's uh, the Lord blinding you, man, okay? Because really, you're not of the elect. And that's what this thing is about. It's all about the Israelites, in particular, the elect of the Israelites, all right? Because that's who the Lord is delivering in this day. Now, the word world here, it says what? Cosmos. Strong's G, 2889. Cosmos, cosmos, cosmos. All right. Now, cosmos means separate society. Now, let me see here in Strong's two uh, twenty-eight eighty-nine. It says um, in a few of these, it says because uh, they give different. It's a couple of uh, meanings what it could mean, right? And it just shows you that in the word world, you know, like I said. It can uh, be uh, in this context, it could be uh, read in a different meaning, okay, because how a person say it. So it says uh, ornament, de declaration, adornment, um, the arrangement of stars, the heavenly hosts as an ornament of the heavens, the world, the universe, which is not. It says the circle of earth, the earth, uh, the inhabitants of the earth, men and the human family. All right. World's affairs, uh, let's see here, right, because uh, cosmos gets into um, the separate societies, like you have the world, the sea world, right, you have the sea world, you have an animal world, you can all call that a world, so you have an animal world, a sea world, you have the human world, you have us, you know, our world, our society, that's all it is when it says cosmos. All right. So now when you go back and read John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world. Now, you know that the world world, he's talking about a world, world world within the world. So what is the world within the world? He's talking about the world of Israel. All right. It says, for God so loved the world, loved the world of what? Israel, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that whosoever is not talking about any and everybody. He's talking about whosoever that will believe of the Israelites. Okay. Remember the Israelites were scattered. We was dispersed through the four corners of this world. The most high disowned us. All right. He put us away. He divorced us because of our wickedness, our transgressions. So why was Yahweh Shai mission? What was his mission? Why was the heavenly father sending his son back? He was sending his son back to reconcile with his people. But uh, elect the elect of his people, let's say the chosen within the chosen. All right. The Lord wasn't coming back. This, the Lord wasn't sending Yahweh Shai back to uh, uh, deliver, um, let's say, to, to deliver on a whole. Well, let me say this. Yahweh Shai is, his mission was to de bring the Israelites back, back, back to the most high. All right. But it was through the elect of the Israelites. All right. So anyway, um, for for the most high, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever of the Israelites believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now. All right. With that being said, you all right, we read that right now. Let's go into another uh, another scripture that has the word world there. All right. This is. um. This is Matthews chapter 24, 24 in verse 3. It says, um, and as I start at 1, it says, And Yahweh Shai went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. 
And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thou coming and the end of the world? So they go that word world again, right? So now when you go into that word world in the strong coordinates, it is, um, let me see, let me get to it. Uh, the end of the world. It's, uh, let's see, uh, G165. All right. And it's uh, Eon. Eon. All right. A-I-O-N or I-O-N. All right. Eon. It says, um, forever and unbroken age. It says the world's universe, period of time, age. Now, when you look into this word eon, it's what? A period of time, age, rulership. All right. So what is the Lord talking about here in the word world in Matthew 24 and 3? He says, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately. All right. And this is just as well as. You could read about when Edris, you know, was talking to the Most High, all right, through the angel. The, he said, what is the part and asunder of the times? And the Heavenly Father told Edris, he said, when Jacob's hill, when Jacob's hand heard for, for held first the hill of Esau, all right, you know, when Esau go down, Jacob is up next that followeth. It's kind of similar. But now you have the disciples asking Yahweh Shai in his presence, you know, when will the end of the world be? Ed Edris was asking the same thing. So it says, then Yahweh Shai said, tell, he said, what? Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thou coming in the end of the world? So what Yahweh Shai was telling them was the signs. Because they asked for the signs. They didn't say the, the date, the time, the year. They said, what's the signs? So we didn't know when you coming back. And Yahweh Shai insisted telling them the signs. All right. But we're focusing on the word world. So you know that the Lord using this word world for what? A rulership, an age, a period of time. Okay? It's not talking about, um, how can I say? Um, uh, well, matter of fact, let me, let me read that again. Uh, period of time, age, rulership. All right? That's why they have a different, in a strong accordance, they have a different uh, word there. For the word world you know in john 3 16 it says cosmos for the word world matthews 24 and 3 it says eon because when you understand what eon mean it means a period of time age rulership when you understand what cosmo mean it mean what separate society okay a world within the world all right so that's two scriptures there that show you the different meanings of the word world because some people just think when they hear the word world they think of the whole entire world well, let's get the word world in the scriptures that means the whole entire world, right? This is uh, Revelations chapter 3 and 10. And I get straight to it. It says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue. Nope. Uh, I read that. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come to worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So you see that the word world there and, and in this context of what it means, you look it up. It's in the. OK, let's see. Let's get to where you at. OK, world. And this is uh, Strong's G 3624. It says Strong's G thirty six twenty five Oikumene Oikumene Oinklemene the inhabited earth the portion of the earth inhabited by the Greeks right whatever uh it says the Roman Empire all the subjects of pride know the whole inhabited earth the world all right the inhabitants of the earth men the universe the world so you see that the word world here in the context is being used is talking about the whole entire world. See? Now that's three different scriptures that have the word world and they all have different meanings of the word world. You see that? Now, let's get, uh, I'm gonna get two more. 
right? Let's let's get let's let's get this one. Isaiah 45 and 17. You know, because Jake be bugging out, man. And it's not hard, but I guess so, because you know, I gotta get Romans 11 and 7 as well. But uh let me, Isaiah 45 and 17. Now, this is the fourth scripture that has the word world, and it's a different meaning. Now it says Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. And mind you, it says Israel. So it's talking about the Israelites. It says, shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. All right. So now when you go into this word world, let me get down to it. World. And this is in the Strong's 5769. And it's a Hebrew word. All right. And this Hebrew word is, let me read it. Awalam. 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 All right. Strong's 5769. It says, long duration, uh, forever, ever, everlasting, evermore, perpetual, old ancient world. Now, let me look this up. I didn't read it because I didn't want to mess it up. Antiquity. Antiquity. That's what it is. Antiqu antiqu antiquity, if I'm saying it right. Antiquity. Antiquity, meaning what? Ancient past, especially the period before the Middle Ages. A uh, great age. Okay. Antiquity. All right. So it says long duration antiquity. And what's this? F f uh, futility. I believe futility. Futurity. Futurity, futurity, right? Future time, the, a future event, renewed or continuing existence. Okay, so it says long duration. So the word world here in, in its context meaning what? A world that will never end. A long duration, antiquity, which is an ancient time. Because in the ancient world, going back to the Adamites, Adam and Eve, you know, they were living over a thousand some years, man. It was like their world would never end until Eve went off, okay, and it was beguiled by the serpent, and then Adam went off in a transgression, and then what? That became we 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 end up uh, uh, the Lord put that that curse upon us to die. He said Adam shall go back into the ground, which Adam means Adam, which means ground. All right. So it says long duration and twiquity and twiquity mean in ancient times, right? Just like in the ancient times and futility. Fertility, fertility, which means the future. Okay, so in the future, in the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be here on earth for the for the Israelites, starting with the elect, who the Lord will deliver in this day. All right, our kingdom is a our world. Let me use the word world. All right, is everlasting. It says forever, ever, everlasting, evermore, perpetual. Okay, perpetual, old age, world, ancient time, long time. Uh, future forever always continuous existence perpetual everlasting indefinite indefinite or un unending future eternity you see so reading this scripture isaiah 45 17 but israel shall be saved in the lord yahweh with an everlasting salvation ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end so this is the fourth scripture that has the word world in it that has a different meaning according to the context in which it is being said. All right. So that's why it's important, you know, to get into the word worlds. Now, let me get one more. And this one is going back into uh, um, the word eon. All right. Uh, get this real quick. My uh, tablet is going to die. OK, Hebrews one and one. And it says, God, Yahweh, who at sundry times and in diverse manners speck in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he have appointed heir, heir excuse me, who have he, who, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. All right. Now, when you go into this word worlds, all right, again, let me get to it. 
It's Eon. Okay? Eon, man. Which represents age, rulership. Alright? Period of time. Alright? So anyway, uh, there you go, man. You have four different scriptures with different meanings of the word world. Alright? And um, let's see here. So now you should understand what John 3.16 is talking about. John 3.16 is not talking about the other nations that can join in. All right. First off, what's that? Isaiah 46 and 3. You have to be born. By, uh, it says be born. Uh, let me get it real quick. Uh, um, Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46 and 3. It says, hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. So you have to be born an Israelite from the seed of your father, man. Okay? You can't just join. And, and because the Israelites went off, the Lord didn't open this thing up to, to um, the other nations. All right? Yahweh Shai in John 3, 16, he's speaking about the Israelites. And I'm a, and I just proved that. Let me get it again. John three and sixteen, it says, "For God so loved the world, which is the world of Israel, the world within worlds, okay, a society, all right, a certain world. He's talking about the world of Israel, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the whosoever is talking about the Israelites who will believe in Yahweh Shai." When Yahweh was here, the Pharisees that kept the law, that supposedly was supposed to be keeping the laws, you know, judges of the law, they didn't, some of them didn't even believe in the Lord. And they was coming against the Lord. So that's why it says whoever, whosoever. It's talking about whosoever of the Israelites. All right. Remember, the Lord said, uh, go, go not to the Samaritans, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel because Israel was scattered. And it's simple, man. It's not that hard. But if you got pride and you stuck in your ways and, you know, you, you're trying to fight for the government churches and your plantation uh, Christianity doctrine that Esau gave you when you were slaves, you know, then you go for it then, man. And that's why I must read this before I go. This is Romans 11 and 7. It says, what then? Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for, but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. Exactly. All right. The election, the election is the chosen of the Lord. Going back, I must go back real quick and get Deuteronomy. And I'm going to come back to that real quick. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 5, right? Well, 7 and 6. It says, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord, Yahweh, thou power. The Lord, Yahweh, thou power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So check that out. All right. These people who the Lord have made holy, okay, and have chosen them and have made them a special people unto himself. Why, you know, why would he not, um, uh, uh, excuse me, why would he change? The scriptures say uh, the Lord changed not, at least Jacob be consumed. And that's why you can clearly understand that throughout this whole book from the old to the new, okay, that the Lord is always talking about his people. He have made them a holy people. He have chosen them to be his people and not only chosen them, but to be a special people unto himself. And it says above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord is talking to the Israelites, man. OK. Um. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to go back to Romans 11 and 7 and I try to get that real quick. This is Romans chapter 11 and 7 again. It says, um. Uh, what then Israel have not obtained that which he seek it for because what is that you know you guys in the churches seek for I mean I will hope that you're in the churches to seek for truth but obviously you're not you're really in the churches and them government churches you know being a Pentecost Jehovah's Wickedness uh, uh, Bat Baptist church uh, uh, Christianity because you want to be a part of something that's why Paul said in Romans 10 um, uh, let me get it real quick I'm right here it says, uh, I bear them record, Romans 10 and 2, I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. You got a zeal, okay, of the Lord. You got compassion, love, you know, but what you guys in the churches don't have, 
is the knowledge. You don't even know who you worshiping. You still praising Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus Christ the, with, with the long stringy hair, that, that's a false image of the of the most high, of the Messiah that is written in the scriptures. Okay? His name wasn't Jesus Christ. First off, our Lord and Savior was a Hebrew Israelite of the tribe of Judah. So that means that his language was Hebrew. His customs, the way he manned himself and what he followed was he was the Hebrews custom. All right. And his nationality was a Hebrew Israelite. All right. So that means that his name had to be in what? Hebrew. OK, just a quick, you know, you know, you know, nail in the coffin for you, man. You should, you know, if you about truth, you're going to worship the truth. If you about lies, you're going to worship lies. It says, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of the most high, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness ha uh, have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of the most high. That's you guys that keep screaming out John 316. Paul's talking to you. Anyway, you know, and I'm going to say this too again. You know, every time I do a lesson like this, when I say the Lord is all just for uh, the Israelites in particular right now, the elect, you know. When I do a lesson like this, a lot of scoffers come on this page and you put all these scriptures where I'm talking to you. As soon as I see you doing that, I'm going to block you because on this video, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. You know, you seeking some attention, go somewhere else. You're not proving anything on my channel. My This channel here is for the hopeful elect of those who's, who's in the spirit and following truth, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So if this not for you, go do, go make your own content, go do your own shows. I like, I'm not, you won't catch me on your page. All right. So get off my page, man. Every time I do a show like this, all these demons come out of nowhere because y'all so butthurt that the scriptures, we we proved through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, the, uh, the men of the Lord prove that the Lord is only dealing with the Israelites and he only will, he only have, okay? He's only going to deliver them, all right? And you want to say other nations going to make it? Well, no, other nations not going to make it. What happened is, is that Israelites look like some of the other nations. So there's speckled birds going on. There's a confusion of a face, of faces, man. All right, so anyway, let me continue. Let me finish this up real quick. Uh, back in Romans 11, right, 11 and 7, it says, uh, I'm going to start at 8. It says, uh, nope, 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So you're blinded, right? Now it says, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Now, in the last lesson I did, which is over 40 minutes, you know, uh I went into this and it's uh it's enlightening, man. Okay. Now the word slumber, right, which is G2659, um Strong's G2659. Katonixis. Katonixis. Hold on. Okay, yeah. Okay. A pricking, piercing, severe sorrow, extreme grief, insensibility, or temper of mind, such as extreme grief easily produces. Hence, a spirit of stupor. A spirit of stupor, which renders their soul. All right. Let, let me see something like I did before. Um, I went into this word. Let me see if I make sure I'm saying it right. Stupor. Right. Stupor. Right. It says a state of near unconsciousness or insensibility. OK. A state of near unconsciousness. So basically, you guys in these churches are stupor, man. All right. You have a state of 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 unconsciousness, you know, and that's why, you know, we had made, uh, you know, dealing with the they call themselves the house of consciousness we call them the house of unconsciousness because everything that they splew out and they debate about it's all lies it's madness you know and it comes to no end you know where here it is the prophets have the truth you know we have the healing agent which is Yahweh Shai we have his word we have his uh the holy spirit that was sent upon the men you know to heal you that's why the scriptures say he that is in trouble come rest with us all right you know the lord is breaking down the strongholds man and that great stronghold is that christianity man that plantation slavery doctrine that jake holds on to you know and they keep shouting out john 3 16 as if it means something you don't know what it means all right and i'm breaking it down what it means so 
stupor, a state of near unconsciousness or, or insensibility. It says a drunk, a drunken stupor, you know, a drunken stupor. Now, insensibility, unconsciousness, enabling to feel something, especially to be moved emotionally. You unable to feel the word, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay. You unable to feel the Holy Spirit, but you think you have the Holy Spirit when you run up and down and shake and caboose yourself in a, in a, in a wicked manner, like a demon in the churches and claim you got the Holy Spirit. That shows you that you got demons on you. And if you can't see that, that's because Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for. The rest were blinded, man. All right. And that's what I'm reading here. That's how I was able to get into this. Insensibility. Okay. Inability to feel something, especially to be moved emotionally. Lack of awareness or concern. Indifference. You don't have the concern of the truth. And that's why... Because the Lord have blinded you, man. All right. And and those that can see this and he that got ears to hear, let him hear. Man, you supposed to be praising Yahweh Bashim Yahushua and being thankful that the Lord opened, you know, your eyes, man. I'm thankful that the Lord opened my eyes to this truth. You know, because those that are in the dark, they really just can't see. They're sincere. Well, some of them are sincere and they just don't, they can't get it. They can't get it. And then you got your you got your demons out there that see it. But then they prideful. They got something to prove. They the agents paid off or, you know, most high is going to send upon them a grievous death, a worse one death, a worse uh, death, man. All right. So let me go back. Um, it says the spirit of stupor. You know, I'm going to start. Hopefully, Lord willing, I could, uh, you know, have this in my um, my memory to continue to keep using this word. You know, the Lord have given them a spirit of stupor. All right. So anyway, let me finish this up. This is Romans 11 and 8. Uh, according as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber, which is a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David say, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. All right. So I hope this lesson was edifying. All right. Just to recap, um, meaning of the word world. You have it written. Um, well, I'm pretty sure it might be even other meanings of the word world uh, when you look it up in the Bible. But I use these four particular scriptures to show you four different meanings of the word world and how it's used in its context. All right. You got Matthew 24 and 3. You got John 3, 16. OK, you got Revelations 3 and 10. And you also have Isaiah 45 and 17. All right. You got the word eon, cosmos, oinklemene, and you have the Hebrew word uh, awalam. All right. Awalam. So with that, I hope you edify. Shalom.